At the time of this recording, I've been lifting weights for about 15 years. Unfortunately, what I'm about to show you may put a slight damper on my ever-failing quest for the body of a Greek god. I was scrolling through social media, as one does, and ran across someone breaking down a study on the effect exercise, especially resistance training, has on cancer, cardiovascular disease and diabetes, and overall mortality. Intrigued, I opened up the study and analyzed it myself, but what I found within brought about nothing short of confusion, as I had to stifle wave after wave of bias in an attempt to reconcile the reality of a potential mistake that I've been making for 15 years. That mistake is... Exercise? Let's start here. The study. This is a meta-analysis of 16 studies, so a grouping of 16 studies that have had further statistical rigor applied to them. The researchers wanted to know if, over time, people who lift weights or resistance train, in some regard, experience health benefits that actually extend to longer-term protection. Basically, they compared people who do not resistance train against people who do, and quantified the rates of cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, and all-cause mortality after decades. So, in that comparison, if we look at cancer, for example, we can see that cancer risk is reduced by resistance training, as seen by the main effects diamond moving to the left, indicating about a 12% reduced risk. The same can also be said of all-cause mortality and cardiovascular disease, as seen here. Diabetes risk reduction was not statistically significant, but did approach significance. So if you were to ask me, the effect is likely there too. Either way, resistance training showed reduced risk in a number of long-term outcomes, which is incredibly encouraging. So then why would I look at the data with any sense of confusion and disbelief? Well, it actually isn't that data, but the data the researchers present next. Instead of looking just at a straight comparison of no exercise versus exercise, so again, specifically resistance training, they wanted to quantify the dose-response relationship. Essentially, they wanted to know the relationship between risk in each one of these areas, cancer, diabetes, etc., with steadily increasing levels of resistance training instead of looking at it as a binary, resistance training versus no resistance training. Here is that data. Let's focus on the all-cause mortality data here. The vertical axis is the amount of risk of death. The horizontal axis is the amount of resistance training, with the further right being the more resistance training. The line down the middle at the 1.0 location is the point of neutrality, so no increased or reduced risk. Finally, the solid line is the estimated risk and the dashed lines on either side of the solid line are the confidence intervals, so that's a statistical way of indicating the certainty of the data. Do you see what I see? Yes, resistance training seemed to noticeably reduce mortality risk. However, after hitting the 40 minute to 60 minute mark, risk seems to increase again until the benefit of resistance training is ameliorated by the 140 minute mark and then continues to increase. This kind of dose-response data offers granularity the previous data did not show. So considering that I've been lifting weights for far more than 40 to 90 minutes per week, you can understand why my ego came to my defense. We won't stand for it. Surely there's a mistake, and so on. Interestingly, that relationship, so the, the slow loss of protection by resistance training, was also shown in cancer and cardiovascular measures, but not in diabetes, which continues to decline the more resistance training that a person does, as seen here. I imagine you might be just as confused as I was because it's well known that exercise has tremendous benefits across a massive array of mechanisms. For example, studies point out that resistance training provides a huge stimulus for muscle contractions. So the cells contract, causing cellular signals within to change. That then promote the production of glute proteins, and these proteins rise to the cell membrane, allowing the transport of blood sugar into the cells, reducing blood sugar and protecting against diabetes. 
Additionally, in relation to cardiovascular disease, resistance training increases perfusion of the heart, meaning blood flow, and thereby oxygen and nutrient delivery are enhanced in the heart during resistance exercise. It's been shown that resistance training increases endothelial plasticity. Essentially, your blood vessels are lined with controller cells. These cells, known as endothelial cells, control the flexibility of the blood vessel by secreting molecules like nitric oxide and endothelin to shrink or expand the blood vessel and allow more blood flow. It's been proposed that resistance training massively increases the pressure on the arteries, but because the effect is so temporary, it leads to positive remodeling of the artery wall, making it more robust. And while we're at it, Many mechanisms have been linked to cancer, with resistance training reducing chronic inflammation by reducing pro-inflammatory molecules, yet increasing certain molecules like interleukin-6 by the actual release of interleukin-6 from the muscle cells themselves. This then leads natural killer cells to invade cancer cells more aggressively and ultimately destroy them. Even that brief description is, as usual, less than 1% of the different mechanisms, but it offers a small sampler of the beneficial attributes of resistance training. So, as I'm feeling a bit better about my 15-year commitment, because these mechanisms are screaming at me that I needn't worry, the long-term data still has me feeling pretty thrown off. Mechanisms are exciting and fun, but it's the outcomes that matter most. So I decided to do a bit more digging and found another meta-analysis that also investigated the very topic. This analysis used many of the same studies, but did have a few different ones as well. And when looking at the data, what do we see? According to this forest plot, we can see that all-cause mortality up top, we can see the cardiovascular mortality in the middle, and we can see cancer mortality on the bottom. And... Again, we see some encouraging news that implementing resistance training leads to reduced risk in all three outcomes as seen by the main effect diamonds moving to the left and the statistical analyses pointing out an effect. Additionally, the effect sizes were the same as seen in the previous analysis. But if we keep following this trend where both analyses agree in the comparisons, Will they also agree in the dose-response data comparison? <sighs> I think the answer is pretty obvious, much to my dismay. Both analyses by separate research groups agree across the board, down to the detail. So, what do we make of this data? How do we apply it? Will I fall into a pit of desperation and depression and stop lifting weights. Well, buckle up, let's ride. First, if we turn to what the researchers pointed out in the first analysis, we can gather some context. They specifically state that their conclusions apply more so to elderly individuals, so anyone over the age of 65, according to their cutoff points. However, I have to unfortunately slightly disagree with their conclusion here. Why? Because in their analysis, they pointed out that they performed what is called a subgroup analysis, which means that the researchers break down the total data from all the participants included in the analysis into subgroups. One of these subgroup analyses was supposed to be focused on trying to find an age effect, as we see it claimed here. Essentially, the researchers put all the data in people under the age of 65 in one group and put the data from everyone over the age of 65 in another group. And then they tried to see if these results seen in the total analysis that we've been going over also applies when separating out by age. Well, I found multiple subgroup analyses, but here's the kicker. None of them were by age. So, as a result, we have no data on the difference between younger and older individuals. So is it then fair to conclude that these results apply to older individuals? I'd say no. To be fair, they sometimes mention this applies to all adults, even if they focus their attention on older individuals. I would have loved to see that subgroup analysis to see if we can actually tease out which age group this applies. But as it stands, we have to generalize to the whole. 
So how does this influence things applicably? Well, these are obviously associations and uncontrolled associations. So it's difficult to get too much conclusive data or information about all this. And even the researchers point this out. We need more studies for the higher end of resistance training. However, even so, I will continue resistance training, and I will likely be doing so around that cutoff point of 140 to 150 minutes. I think that the benefit that I reap personally from a mental standpoint and a life standpoint outweighs the potential reduced risk reduction. That said, it's also entirely possible to achieve your physique goals, your health goals, and your strength goals in a smaller time frame in the gym. So if you want the best of both worlds, it's easily achievable. Consider training three times a week for 30 minutes. That is within that threshold and easily doable. I'm just a masochist. <laughs> Maybe in the future I'll reduce my time and invest that time elsewhere, but as it stands, the data does not change my behavior. Although I do believe the data. Finally, I agree with the researchers. We need more of it to be more clear on if there is an age-specific effect or if there is some other confounder that might be throwing all this off. As it stands, a small to moderate amount of resistance training is highly beneficial, and overdoing it can reduce that benefit. Maybe too many deadlifts leads to death itself. How poetic. Anyway, you know what else is poetic? This video that I've got linked right here talking about exercise and longevity, which is incredibly ironic, but offers some comforting words. Check it out. I can smell the iron calling my iron addicted self. Bye.